Hey, welcome to Trapping Inc. I'm Rich Mellon. Today is November the 1st and it is the opening day of Fisher and Martin here. It is very late. I'm usually gone long before daylight, but we have had the strangest year. It uh, froze up really early. I didn't get any muskrat. Then it thawed. The last couple weeks have been a, just a bloody mess and it took me forever to get in here yesterday because the roads are so bad. And uh, I'm late going this morning. I'm just chopping up some beaver. Get out, set that line. Gonna be a good show, stick with us. Trapping is the cornerstone that Canada was built on. Brave and sometimes crazy men and women, fueled by the lucrative fur trade, explored and mapped our great nation. Hundreds of years have passed since then, but trapping still remains vibrant, strong, and steeped in the ancient traditions. The fur bearers still follow the old paths and live as dictated by thousands of years of instinct. Fur only gets prime in the harsh temperatures of winter and trappers must respect and prepare for the weather. Trapping's past is firmly rooted in history, but today, the gear and techniques have changed. Canada is still known for the best wild fur in the world, and today our pelts are sold on the global market. Our community is large, and our numbers are growing. We are trappers. This is what we do and where we belong. Join us in our adventures. Welcome to Trapping Inc., the face of today's trapper. This is one of my favorite Martin Fisher sets. We got a big old snag of a tree here. It's easy for them to climb. And I'm in a swamp here. So it's uh, just a natural place where they're gonna be anyway. Now uh, this is, uh, while there are some, some spruce in that, this just, just isn't a muskeg swamp. This is, uh, you know, we've got a lot of mixed uh, boreal forest here. Uh, a lot of grass, a lot of undergrowth. Uh, you know, the, the willows and that kind of stuff. All the stuff that's really important uh, for mice and voles, which is what brings the fisher and, and the marten here. I got uh, some fresh beaver here a week ago, and I've let it sweeten up a bit on the floor of my garage before I, I chopped it up. <laughs> They're shoved up in there, that, that wire cage holds it good for me. Got a Belial 120. And a little shot of my favorite, my homemade uh, Fisher and Martin lure. Whew. I think I really outdid myself this year. Wow. Uh, that wet snow in uh, June did me no favors. There are miles and miles of this. I'm working hard for my line set today. All right, here's another one. And you can see, I put it out on a stick so she, when she swings out, she swings out and hangs away from the tree because you see this tree? See the sap on it? If my animal were to lay against it, I could end up, yeah, with sap on it, just like I got on me. So that's one of the things you want to think about when you're setting them up. Sometimes just a pole sticking out so your trap swings free and hangs out, help you a lot. Also helps you for, for critters too, like uh, squirrels and voles and, and that kind of stuff getting on it and, and uh, damaging your fur. But in this case, I'm more worried about the pitch. 
Traffic Inc. is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Halford Hides, unique beyond compare. Find us online at halfordsmailorder.com. Prevail Energy, the healthy energy drink. Find us online at endurance99.com. And by Alberta Outdoorsman Magazine, Alberta's only hunting, fishing, and trapping magazine, albertaoutdoorsman.ca. This uh, combination catwalk mud flap on the new machine is absolutely awesome. Really lets you get up and take a look at the world. Unfortunately, what it's shown me of the world here sucks. Look at that. Look at the number of trees that are down here. Wow. I have chainsawed my way past two different uh, boxes now, not even knowing they were there. What a mess. Holy. I'm earning every one of these boxes today. Oh, we got a, a couple of fish out of this one so far since we've set it up. Been up a couple years now. <laughs> I always take and uh, leave my my wires with every box and I like to, you know, in this case, just clipped it on my quick release. And you can see I had a bear here. <laughs> and he tried very hard to uh, take it with him. I don't know what he thought he was going to do with it, but he gave her a good jerk anyway. Ah, uh, nice thing about my patented bait keeping mesh though, is it doesn't take much to straighten it back out and away we go. Well, he didn't attack this at all though, so let's get some bait in her and get her set back up again. So it's not all about the trapping. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's about supper. Yeah. You don't, uh, you don't maintain the, the condition I'm in without uh, having a few feeds of uh, whatever and there we go. Nice, uh, nice partridge. And it's such a great time. You cannot believe this, but this is the uh, first week of, of November. This is crazy. We were froze up and, and uh, covered in snow and everything uh, the first, first few days of October. And then in the last week and a half, it's just been heat and, and warmth and it's- Good uh, chicken hunting. Yeah, chicken hunting. Chicken hunting's been good. <laughs> All right, my favorite sight. We've got a Martin hanging in the tree. I love this. <laughs> oh yeah. Man, this is really dark for one on our line. Very dark. Um, early early season here. Uh, we're we're just on the uh, the eighth, ninth, or tenth of uh, of November. But the weather's got so warm. Like, uh, it, talk about making it tough for trying to catch a an animal that. You know, is is a an ultimate predator. He he doesn't need me. Uh, I probably got him more out of curiosity than anything else. Beaver bait and everything is still up there, so he I can take a, and pull him out of this 160 Belial, and we can get down the road. But there's the first one of the year, Sam. That is a good day. <laughs> That's awesome, huh? This is one of my favorite sets here. This uh, this particular set pays off. Probably two Martin and a Fisher every year, and it is right on the edge of a big swamp. We got a couple of beaver dams up here. It's all this low stuff. You see this low willow and everything. And I think that there's just so much food here for them, with the uh, uh, the voles and the mice and that. A lot of people talk about squirrels being important. I get a lot more of them in this low stuff like this. And what a beauty! I love them. They are so soft. He uh, popped into the 160 Belial. I mean, it's kind of overkill, but it uh, certainly Still does the job. <laughs> you can't kill him too dead. Put it that way. So it it, it did a good job here. And it's fast. It's right? fast. It's just over quickly. Well, that's our responsibility, right? As trappers, and it's our responsibility to make sure it's done fast and ethically. And and this this animal probably died within a, a very very short time by by law by the treaty it's every it's 120 seconds and I'll bet you in that case it was because it struck him we suitcased him we got him right behind the back of the head uh, feels like it broke his neck so I mean over quickly just about instantly that's awesome and now for Halford's trappers tip of the week on my Fisher and Martin line, I set hundreds of these every winter. 
I move them several times a winter. And every time I have an animal, I have to remove a trap again. In the beginning, I had the old bent over nail to the tree. The problem with that was after I'd scattered a half a dozen hammers uh, all over my trap line, I figured there had to be a better idea. So I started looking for some sort of quick release. And I went through very various different ones until I came out on these. And I think these are called a spring clip, but you can see how easy it is right there. Um, just press it down. I can do it with my mitts on, my gloves on, do it in the cold, really quick, really fast. Uh, I mounted on a, a 1 16th piece of cable, just using my, my snare swager. And then for trees that it's okay for my animal to lay against, um, I just swage it on a double-headed uh, nail. Or in cases where I have my, my leaning log, I can have it in there as well. My animal hangs free, no damage done. On uh, the trees that I have taken and added a, a, a stick for the animal to swing out on or I'm using a branch for it to swing out on, I just like to use a doubled over piece of uh, tie wire and I switch it together just like I do on my link, swear, uh, link snares and then it's just a matter of and uh, away I go. I don't like a single, single piece of tie wire because it's pretty easy to break. Double, I never have to worry about it. The last thing is it's kind of handy, I like anyway, is if your trap has a swivel, okay? The nice thing about this swivel is that, you know, nothing ever gets loaded up. If the, if the animal can hang there and swivel around, nothing gets, nothing gets spun up, nothing gets tightened up. That's how I do it on my line. Just makes things a little bit faster. That was Halford's Trapper's Tip of the Week. Oh, wow. <laughs> this would be fisher number one. You know what's amazing? We actually got a Martin before the before the first Fisher. Oh, where'd that come from? Oh, might have been from last year and couldn't yeah, find it in the snow. Maybe. Isn't that a dandy? Oh my. Just a beauty. He, beauty, beauty. And he's frozen or she's frozen. So it's been here a while, but those Yeah. What a great catch on that. I'll get the... So dang warm, huh? Oh yeah. Well, there's no damage to take them out this early. No. Even though he's frozen, the trap isn't frozen to him, so there's no there's no damage to the fur at that. all, but right across the back of his neck here. Yeah. That is so beautiful. Look at the oh I I love how the fisher gets that frosting up on their neck. Yeah, and that. always. Nice mature one, but it like not huge, but a really nice. Imagine 10, 11 pounds. Yeah, if I stood here longer, it would probably start bug bugging my arms. <laughs> it's good. There's the bait in the back. Yeah, it's perfect, right? You gonna give it a little extra sniff there, or? Oh, I guess I must, mustn't I? You have to. <laughs> Come on now. You're not a full trapper till you take a snort. I don't have to take a snort to you. Trapper. What? You think you know somebody? You got you, you get away with a special consideration here? Or? Uh huh. Yeah. Boy, look on your face. Yeah, I know. Ugh. <laughs> My mom said, "What would you do if your face froze that way?" <laughs> I know you'd love me anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And into the back. Our fur gets well taken care of. Yes. Well, you have to. I mean, it's not ever going to be any better than this, but it sure can be a lot worse if you don't look after it. So. No truer words were ever spoken. Why trapping, you ask? 
Where else are you going to get a view like that while breakfast is cooking and you're making plans to head out on the Martin line? <laughs> Life doesn't get much better. Well, we're hoping. We're going to go down south and check a uh, part that I got set up last week where I had to do all the, all the chainsaw on that. So much work. At least with Sandy along, uh, she can drive the Argo to keep up to me. <laughs> I did open 11 kilometers last weekend. That meant I... I worked 11 kilometers packing a chainsaw, walked back and got the Argo each time, so <laughs> I should have rented a grandchild or something, just somebody just to keep the Argo up with me, but we're hoping to be able to check that quickly this morning and then um, actually open up some more. These, uh, the silly Chinook in the middle of November has, has made life difficult, but... In anticipation of setting a bunch, I'm doing something here that, that Sandy's not so thrilled about. <laughs> I'll put the gloves on. Come on over here. Trapping Inc. is brought to you by these fine sponsors. Argo UTV. Any season, any terrain. ArgoUTV.com Puma Knives. Knife maker to the world since 1786. And by Carl Zeiss Sport Optics. We make it visible. Gentech-intl.com so I'm decanting the uh, lure, <laughs> and if you look, the look at Sandy's face doesn't compare to what the bear looks like in the bucket here. It looks awful. <laughs> and I can attest that it smells worse. <laughs> so what I've done is I have a bunch of fish that I've rotted down to get the fish oil. Well, I also get bones and stuff too, so I have to kind of strain it a bit. As you, ooh, there's a big blop. Strain it a bit. Into this bucket, I've put an ounce of pure quill, which is skunk essence that we got from our buddy uh, Ryan, and you saw Sandy actually get it right from the source. <laughs> so then I, I, I take and put it into the, uh, into the new lure bottles. Now, this is one of the things where it's just about impossible not to get a little bit on you. <laughs> So right now, Sandy's not really happy with me because of uh, how bad things smell. But man, let me tell you, this is the gold. This is the gold. A few bones in it. <laughs> the look on your face is absolutely priceless. <laughs> Oh. It's no wonder your your nose is burned out, man. I tell you, that that's just the most gross. It's funny because all you smell is the skunk, right? Oh no, I can smell some of the other rotten stuff now. Oh, you you're getting a little of the under under, are you too? Well, that's good. Your nose is getting sophisticated. <laughs> Whoops. Mm -hmm. There we go. We've decanted enough for the day. Let's go trapping. Oh. <laughs> what a great way to start the day. Our very first box, huh? Yeah, very first box. It's kind of a, a nasty way to get here. There's a lot of deadfall and whatnot, but anyway. There, I moved closer. I couldn't see your pretty face. <laughs> well, you couldn't see this pretty fisher. That's a nice one. Really nice, and uh, in a 160, just right across the back of the neck. Beautiful, but pay attention to this. So we started doing this because what happens is they get up inside this box, the trap goes off and it swings them out and away from the tree. So no other rodent is gonna climb the tree and pluck them, um, which happens a lot. So this keeps the fur in really good shape and uh, not to say that they couldn't, I guess, pluck at the tail or anything, but nevertheless, it's still, it's still a great way to keep it away from the tree and most of the fur protected, so. You notice how these are spray painted at a bright color? <laughs> we still managed to leave them even though they're painted a bright color. Well, in our defense, though, we're doing so much and filming and everything else, but I left a set yesterday. Yep. So, there. Look at that beautiful, beautiful light color on the 
neck and shoulders. So pretty. Gosh, they're a beautiful animal. There you cool. go. Something else plucked the screen already, or else he plucked it out with maybe his paws. <laughs> you know what's funny part? We got a, a, a fisher here last year. And there's a, a, a lot of uh, people that say when you get lots of fisher, you don't have many martin. And this is the first martin we've got over in the corner here. Yep. Oh, my. <laughs> he was trying to reach through to grab a net. Look at that beautiful orange on him. Yeah. When I set this up, I talked about how we'd caught a fisher here last year and that the log had went all the way across and I'd cut it off and, and that oftentimes Martin and Fisher, the weasel family, used these for, for trails. And I actually filmed a piece of the uh, the tracks that were on the snow here at that time, you know, a week ago there was still snow here. So that was probably this fella and uh, he, he come back again, checked her out and uh, we, we got him. And this has the, uh, the flow through style screen on the back end here you still see the bait in there yep and I don't know whether it it's true or not that you can this allows the scent of that bait to I don't think carry further maybe I don't know I don't think there's that look at the size of him that He's is huge him or her him him, good. That's what we want is hymns. <laughs> one one him can uh, can, can uh, take care of breeding a lot of hers, and but the hers are hard to replace. Well, it's not official until it, the fur's all been inspected. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy is our big fur inspector, and he's always happy to see us when we get back to the cabin. This has been an exceptionally good starting week for us. I'm amazed, you know, with the warm weather and all that. I I didn't think we'd have. Have much they really don't need us so maybe it means that our populations are up uh, i hope so anyway hope you had a great time today we'll see you on the trail you can keep up with all the action at trappinginc.com or join our facebook and youtube sites